Now, even though main memory is not a bottleneck as far as the time complexity of the algorithm is concerned, we still want the main memory to be large enough that we can store and keep track of the count of how many times individual items or pairs of items or triples of items have appeared so far in the file that we are parsing through, the file of transactions. So as we make a pass through the transaction file, we will be noting how many times each item has occurred so far among the total number of transactions that we have seen, how many pairs of items have appeared so far, how many triples of items have appeared so far and so on. So as you'll see the algorithm is going to do multiple passes through this file. In the first pass it's going to keep track of only frequent item sets where the size of the item set is a single item. So we are, we are going to keep track of singleton sets in the first pass. Then in the second pass we are going to look at pairs of items. Then in the third pass we are going to look at triples of items. So in each pass we will have to keep track of uh, either pairs or triples or some uh, some subset of items of some size and for example when we are keeping track of pairs of items that are generated from each basket we have to count how many such pairs we have seen so far for all possible pairs of items. So to keep track of this count we have to ensure that the number of such pairs the number of such pairs has to be small enough that the counts can be maintained for all those pairs in main memory so as we parse through the file we need to count occurrences of individual items pairs of items triples of items and so on and the number of different things we can keep count of is limited by the amount of main memory we have. Now you can think of bypassing this by using virtual memory because even if the data doesn't fit into main memory we can still save a part of the data on disk and then get it from disk when we want to access it. But the problem with this is that we will have to update these counts randomly. So as we are parsing through the file of transactions, let's say we are looking at a particular basket and this basket has items uh, 23, 27 and 30. So we will generate three pairs. So let's say this basket has three items. We will generate three pairs from it. 23, 27, 27, 30 and 23,30. Now when we generate the pair 23,27 we want to update the fact that we have seen one additional count for this pair. So we will look at what the count so far is for this pair 23,27 and add one to it. Now if that particular count value so far uh, the, the count so far is saved on disk. Let's say not all the counts can be maintained in main, me main memory so some of them may be stored on disk and if this happens to be stored on the disk then we will have to get that particular disk block into main memory and then update that disk block by adding one to the count of this pair and then probably save that block back onto the disk at some point. Now because what pairs we are going to look at next is totally random. We may have to randomly access different uh, the counts for different pairs of items and that means we may have to often access the disk in order to fetch 
the current count for the pair that we are looking at. So that may involve a huge number of disk seeks, especially if most of the count data is going to be maintained on disk because of shortage of main memory. So having a lot of swapping from and to the disk is going to be a disaster because that's going to increase the time that the algorithm will take to run. So if there's, if there's a lot of swapping, something called thrashing, then the algorithm will be very frequently accessing disk blocks and fetching disk blocks to the main memory and storing disk blocks back from the main memory to the disk and that will be a disaster in terms of the amount of time that the algorithm will take to run. So we have to ensure that our main memory is large enough that all our counts can be maintained in main memory and updated in main memory as we pass through this fi huge file of transactions. Now it turns out that the hardest problem in the frequent item sets algorithm turns out to be finding frequent pairs of items. So the hardest problem is not finding frequent items, singleton items, and it's also not finding triples of items or quadruples of items and so on. The hardest problem is finding the frequent pairs of items. And the reason for that is that frequent pairs are going to be much more common than frequent triples. And that's because if you have many frequent triples, imagine a scenario where you have many frequent triples, then you're going to also have a huge number of frequent pairs. Because if you look at any triple of items, i1, i2 and i3, let's say this is a frequent triple, that means i1 and i2 are also going to be frequent pairs, i2 and i3 are going to be frequent pairs, and i1 and i3 are also going to be frequent pairs. So the number of frequent pairs of items is going to be much larger than the number of frequent triples. And in fact we're going to assume that frequent triples should be rare because if they are not rare that means we're going to have a huge number of frequent item sets because the number of frequent pairs will be very large and that's going to be a problem for our supermarket store because if there is a huge huge number of frequent item sets that we are discovering it's going to be very difficult for the people in the store to act upon such a huge number of frequent item sets in order to arrange the items uh, the, the placement of items in their store and to arrange for discounts on some particular sets of items. So for that reason we are going to assume that we will make our support threshold high enough that frequent triples are going to be rare just so that the number of frequent item sets we get at the end of the algorithm is a small enough number is a manageable enough number that the store can act upon the item sets that are there in the uh, that are output by the algorithm and then use those frequent item sets to generate the association rules and then use the association rules actually to act upon um, uh, to basically decide where the different items need to be placed in the store and which items should have a discount and which ones shouldn't and so on So let's assume that we are going to concentrate on pairs because pairs are going to be more numerous than triples, quadruples and so on. Much more numerous. And this technique that we are going to see for keeping track of uh, and finding frequent pairs of items can then be extended to triples and quadruples and so on. So the general approach is going to be that we are going to consider all pairs of item sets uh, sorry we're going to consider all pairs of items that means we're going to generate all the item sets so again focusing only on pairs of items as we parse the transaction file 
for each basket we're going to look at all the items in the basket and generate all possible pairs of items so I'm assuming that we are doing the second pass we're doing a second pass through the file as I mentioned in the first pass we'll only be keeping track of singleton sets and we'll be keeping track of which items individually are frequent then in the second pass we'll look at which pairs of items are frequent and when we are looking at when we are making the second pass we will generate all pairs of items for each basket but we will keep count or keep track of only those that turn out to be frequent at the end so obviously during the pass itself we don't know which ones are going to turn out to be most frequent but at the end of the second pass we would know which of them which of the pairs of items are most frequent and we are just going to keep we are just going to store information about the frequent pairs as we move into the third pass through the file for generating frequent triples and the reason why we can just do with keeping track of frequent pairs as we move into the third pass or in general uh, in any pass let's say in the kth pass we'll be generating not pairs or triples but uh, k-tuples and at the end of the kth pass we just need to keep track of which k-tuples are frequent as we move into the k plus first pass and you'll see why in just a moment so let's discuss how exactly we are going to uh, determine which pairs of items is frequent so as we parse the transaction file so this is the second pass actually let's look at the first pass before we look at the second pass so in the first pass we'll only be keeping track of which individual items are frequent so we are keeping track of item sets that are singleton sets so for example in the first basket let's say I first encounter item number 10 then 15 uh, 23 40 and 50 so as I parse the first basket I will add to the count of the tenth item the number 1 so before I begin my first pass all the counts are assumed to be 0 so as I make the first pass and as I parse individual items for every item that I parse I'm going to add 1 to its count so at the end of the first pass I would have a count of all the items I would have kept track of how many times each item occurred throughout this file and if an individual item appeared more than s times where s is the support threshold then the singleton set containing just that item is going to be a frequent item set so that is what the first pass will yield the first pass is going to yield all frequent item sets of size 1 in the second pass we are going to calculate all frequent item sets of size 2 that is we are going to keep track of all pairs of items we are going to count how many times the various pairs of items appear and then at the end we are going to find out which of those pairs of items occurred frequently so as we read the file in the second pass we are going to count in main memory the occurrences of each pair so for example when we parse the first basket we're going to have a bunch of items in the first basket so let's say 10 and 15 are two items so there's going to be a pair generated from them 10 comma 15 and we are going to maintain a count for all pairs so when we encounter when we 
encounter this list of items and we generate the pair 10 comma 15 recall that we are going to generate all possible pairs of these n items in the basket so when we generate the pair 10 comma 15 we will add 1 to its count and we'll do this for all pairs for each pair we will add 1 to its corresponding count so from each basket of n items we are going to generate the nc2 pairs by the two nested loops that I mentioned in a previous video and then at the end of the second pass we are going to count up uh, I mean we, we, we would already know how many times each pair of items appeared and uh, we are just going to see which of those counts were larger than the support threshold s and those are the pairs of items that are going to be frequent item sets of size 2 So if the total number of items in the store is n, capital N, recall that the number of items that are present in an individual basket, which is small n, is going to be is, is assumed to be relatively is, is assumed to be very small compared to the total number of items that are kept in the store. So if there are n items kept in the store we can have in theory a total of n choose 2 pairs of items so these are the number of counts that we have to maintain in the second pass in the worst case because in the worst case every pair of items could have some count so if this value or, or if the space taken by these many number of counts exceeds main memory okay, which it could relatively easily because even if you have capital N equal to say a hundred thousand as in a Walmart store you could still have a very very large number when you consider all pairs of items drawn from that set so it's possible that we may not be able to keep track of so many counts in main memory so we will assume that our main memory is large enough that we can keep track of uh, all occurrences of each pair or we can count how many times each pair occurs and I'll just explain how you can save space uh, if it turns out that main memory is not as large 